Hey, welcome back to the Laravel Podcast Season 5, where every single episode is about a particular package. Last season, it was about different topics in the Laravel world, and now they're individual packages. Today, I'm joined by Body van, <laughs> Body van den Heuvel. That's not right. Um, I'm going to ask him to say his name and not bastardize it like I just did. So I'm going to be calling him Barry for the rest of the time. He gave me permission to do that. Normally, I wouldn't, but I'm so bad at his name that I'm going to do it. So Barry, would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and who you are and say your name correctly for the audience? <laughs> Yeah, hello. I'm uh, Barry van den Heuvel, or just Barry in English. Uh, English yeah. is easier. Um, yeah, I think most people have heard my name or my, my handle, uh, Barry VDH. VDH in yeah. Dutch, but that's short for my name. Uh, and I develop uh, Laravel packages mm -hmm. since uh, a long time. So. What's your actual day job? Are you, are you a programmer as your day job? No, I um, uh, run a company together with two uh, partners. We set it up uh, 10 years ago. Um, and when we started after my, uh, after graduating from college, um, we had a lot more free time. I had a lot more free time because, you know, we were starting a business. Yeah. And so that gave us, gave me a lot of opportunity to start building open source things. Um, and at the time we, yeah, we started using Laravel mm -hmm. and yeah, we really, really liked Laravel. So we thought, okay, maybe we can uh, build packages for the open source and yeah, it can save us time, but also uh, uh, help people. So, well, it's, and it's I helped. still do that uh, 10 years later with, with the same two partners, but now I we have it. like uh, 10, 15 developers working for us. Very but, cool. Uh, well, we'll definitely make sure we link um, everything y'all are doing in the show notes for sure. Um, but today we're here to talk about debug bar, which is certainly the one that is the most popular of the packages that you maintain. So I was wondering before we start with anything else, could you just for anybody who's never heard of debug bar before as a package, Laravel debug bar as a package, can you give us just like the pitch, the elevator pitch, or what is the job that it solves to have this um, package installed in your Laravel applications? Uh, well, Laravel debug bar just gives you a quick overview of what's going on in your in your application um it shows you the the sql queries the, the views that are used on which route you are currently visiting uh, what files are open things like that so it, it really helps me and other developers when you dive into a, a new project to see okay what's going on uh, what am i looking at where I have to, where do i have to be to to make some changes and it also helps you to to spot problems with your application. Like if, mm -hmm. oh, I have uh, 3000 queries on this page, maybe uh, I should yeah, do something. You should optimize that a little bit. Yeah. yeah you, can, you can really easily see if anything is wrong. I love that. Um, so before we actually dive into like the package itself, I'm really curious, what is the story behind you creating this package? Like where, what motivated you to make it in the first place? Um, well, for the, the older people, um, Using Laravel, they they probably have used uh, Ambu mm -hmm. or, or Embu. I don't know how you yeah. Embu, that's it. what I would say, but uh, yeah. that was that was with uh, Laravel Laravel three mm -hmm. version three, which was I don't know 2011, 2012. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Uh, that had, had a little toolbar called Ambu uh, mm -hmm. made by DLDs. Um, and it showed you a few things like also the, the SQL queries and things like that, um, which, which I really liked mm -hmm. and a lot of people liked, I think. Yeah. Um, but when, when the upgrade came to, uh, Laravel 4, it wasn't included by default anymore or not at all. Um, so during the time there was a, a beta or, or a pre-release version of Laravel 4. And I thought, okay, maybe we can do something with that. And then I found, uh, uh, the debug bar package. The, there's a common debug bar package uh, that was created, and, and uh, it came to my attention. And I thought, hey, maybe we can use this for Laravel. Yeah. Uh, so I made a quick proof of concept, uh, shared it on the forums that, that were also uh, before Laravel IO, uh, the, the, the old forums. Yeah. And people were enthusiastic, so uh, we yeah we built from that and started uh, yeah adding collectors and things for everything we could mm -hmm. think of and uh, it kind of grew from there. I love that. And it's so it's helpful for other people to hear that like there's a legacy of Laravel applications and programmers that not a lot of, not a lot of people knew. Like a lot of us grew up came up and learned how to program Laravel from Dale. 
but some people knew Dale before he was writing the things and some people have never heard of Dale, right? But Dale Reese was the original person who wrote books about Laravel, like long before I did. Um, and so that's really cool to hear kind of his, his involvement in that story. And it's also helpful to hear, I think from a lot of people who are a little overwhelmed about the idea of making their own packages that like you didn't build the entirety of like the JavaScript and the CSS that injects it in there. You found an existing package that allows you to hook your own kind of spots into it. And you added probably a couple spots at the beginning and then later added more and more spots, meaning like tabs or however you think about them, right? Like different pieces of data that are being collected. You're primarily writing things that collect data into an existing framework versus also having to have built all the framework itself, right? Yeah, that's that's what I really like about also Laravel, but also building packages. You don't have to do everything from scratch. You can just, yeah. I, I like this thing and I want to integrate it. And then, yeah. then there's a lot more people working working on a package. Because, okay, maybe in, in this case, the, the Laravel package uh, exploded uh, compared to the, to the other yeah. existing packages. Yeah. So it kind of, became more popular than, than the original one. And, and I also took over the... Uh, oh, you did? I didn't know that. Okay. No, because I like to be a bit in control. You know, if, if I, I see something, I want to go yeah. full on uh, yeah. in it. And, and there, there are a few more packages that I, once I get into that, I'll, I'll keep making pull requests. And yeah. eventually they just say, okay, maybe we, yours, should, yeah. we just read the access or write access and, and uh, have fun with it. <laughs> And That's that was awesome. also the case because the original maintainer wasn't really active in, in mm -hmm. PHP anymore. So he was like, okay, maybe um, maybe you want to do uh, things like that. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, that is helpful if you can make, make changes on a Laravel package, but also on the original one. So if, if you have to mm -hmm. think, okay, maybe this is useful for everyone, then just yeah. put it there. And then also I the the other applications work. That's helpful because I, one of my questions I was going to ask is, do you find yourself making a lot of pull requests back to the original package? And so now the answer is absolutely yes. So that's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's basically scratching your own itch. You don't have to yeah. work around everything. You can just fix it in the original package. And For everybody, yeah. yeah. That's very cool. Um, so if somebody were to install it, obviously they can just go to the um, the GitHub page for the package, but I'm curious, are there any key setup steps or dependencies that people need to have taken care of, or can they just install this on any app? Um, <clears throat> no, you can just, uh, as far as I'm aware, you can just install it in, in a uh, app. Uh, it's, it's been around since Laravel 4, so it has to work on any yeah. version of Laravel you, you install. Yeah. Um, I... I really recommend to just install it on development not on mm -hmm. production uh, yeah. you can disable it and things like that obviously on production but just compose require uh, dev and, yeah. and you can't make any mistakes because you mm -hmm. see sometimes websites running debug bar on production anything yeah you don't want to uh, do that it's not, not safe not <laughs> and i will so be that's the only thing and, 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 and it should just work if you have uh, debug mode enabled but mm -hmm. you should probably have on uh, local development yeah, and that's just for anybody who doesn't know, there's a um, app underscore debug constant in the .env file that's what triggers that. So if you have it off in your local, you won't see it. And if for some reason you do end up having the debug bar installed in production, which you shouldn't do, but I have had it happen once, and there was a reason for the existing programmer to have done it, and you just make sure app underscore debug is turned off, and then you're still safe. So <clears throat> Yeah, you should have that off anyways on production so yes exactly it's, it's, <laughs> in theory you should be okay visible, so, uh, yes you'd be aware yeah. yep um so are there any lesser used features? actually you, since we haven't actually talked about it can you talk through just a couple of the individual tabs that it offers for people uh yeah let's pull i know up, you uh, breeze through them real quick but if you could just kind of walk through them a little bit more slowly slowly okay um well the the, the most important for me uh, is, is a query collector. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to see the, the queries which are happening. And uh, a lot of times when you, we have a problem or some unexpected result, I want to see, okay, what what query is running and why isn't it applying yes. my scope or, or mm -hmm. things like that. And then you can say, okay, obviously I'm missing it or maybe I just uh, copy the, the query and, and tinker with it until it's it's okay. Um, that's, that's easy for me to debug problems, but also... Yeah, as I said before, if, if it spikes to, to 100 or 1,000, then, yes. then I'm missing some ego loading things. And then mm -hmm. it's really easy to spot if the, the number goes up. Yeah. Um, so I use that a lot. 
obviously the the route collector uh, and the view collector make mm -hmm. it just easy to see what am i what am i doing is it why is, is this page not loading why is this view weird you can just check okay i'm on this controller i'm using these views uh, yeah if i want to yeah. change some button i don't have to think through all the code i can see okay uh, this view here yeah uh, php storm click uh change yes yeah. that makes a lot of easy a lot easier to uh to change also yeah, because i'm a company uh with, with multiple developers it's easy to mm -hmm. just switch to another project and, and dive into that yeah yeah i love um, that uh, can i chip in on that real quick one of the things i really like about that is that it's often difficult to know the state of like the data and the logic that is passing through in any given request as it goes through like in their tools like xdebug and ray and dump and die that you know that we use to give us like little insights into what's going on but i really think that the debug bar is the first place i've ever interacted with where it shows me as much as possible it's like here's the middleware here's the routes here's the views here's the queries database queries so like when you just look at a page and you're like what all is going on this page debug bar is absolutely the best solution for that i love that you called that out yeah i think it's it's also uh, I do like the, the other tools, and I definitely see the benefits. I also enjoy Telescope, uh, for mm -hmm, instance, yeah. to have a really clear picture. But sometimes I just want to have a quick overview, and, and when I am working on the page, I just want to see it. I don't have to think, oh, maybe I should check Telescope if there are a lot of queries. I just want to see that that tab yep, this with, one page with yeah. the number. I say, oh, wait, I, I have to check this. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that that is a bit of a difference. Um, uh, the other things are more, um, like, um, uh, which Laravel PHP version you are, are mm -hmm. uh, running the, uh, the messages, uh, like if you log anything, <clears throat> it makes it a lot, I think, easier to debug if you're mm -hmm. not, you know, using xdebug, but just want to also not dump and die, which yes. is, which is, is common in Laravel, but I just like to put like tiny debug statements. So okay, I'm here and this is my thing and this is my value, and then mm -hmm. I can see it in the, in the in the flow without interrupting anything. So that's that's yeah. easy for me to do work sometimes with uh, with the messages and to uh, just verify everything uh, is working. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically everything that Laravel uh, outputs as an event, like uh, mails. Things like that, that mm -hmm. we can show that um, even is, if it's just a line in the in the the tab. Okay, it's sending an email. It's doing mm -hmm. this. It's uh, it's loading this page. Um, yeah, the session tab. What's in the session? Yeah, is yeah. the session expected? Uh, am I yeah, seeing uh, the, the same session back as what I I want to see? Um, uh, the request collector. Um, makes it easy to see okay what what uh what is the input that's being sent what's the response what are the headers uh, am i missing something yeah um yeah i think there are a few more but not as common um, mm -hmm. you not everything is disabled by default um because some things just like the events if you have a busy application you can have like thousands of events and, got it and, yeah, it's all loaded on the front end, so it doesn't really help performance. So yeah. I mostly disable that. Okay, got it. Um, and, and logs uh, and files and config are also not not enabled. But if you're looking for something Want. specific, you can. Okay, that's can cool. Just use that. Because my next question or you is, you can create there... your own collectors. So yeah, yeah. So my next question is, are there any other lesser used features that are cool? So you mentioned a few. There's some of the the collectors that are not actually enabled by default. So people should definitely check out what's options there. But also, I remember Jonathan Rennick was talking about how he built his own collectors and then PR'd them in for like a number of eloquent modules that are hydrated. So yeah, could, the, could... the models collector uh, is, is useful. So we made a pull request to to add that. Mm -hmm. um, I recently made a uh, live wire. Uh, oh, cool! Um, but that's uh, this this week. I'm working on uh, October CMS. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people use October CMS, but uh, I got uh, started with a, with an existing project using October CMS. So uh, there was a debug bar integration, but it didn't uh, add 
new features for for October CMS. So it's it's really easy to make your own collector and the, yeah. uh, add things like okay for October CMS I want to show this and this and this yeah and then create a collector and make it that is um, cool. That's that's it helps me a lot. So yeah, the idea that I could amazing. not just create like a like for example the Jonathan's with the models he he created something that's helpful to everybody and actually pull requested it to the core. But like I could create one just for this application, a collector, and said on every single page I want to know which of my various companies actually get touched on this page, right? And so it'll just, I just create a collector for that and then I'll see it. That yeah, being accessible yeah, is really cool. Yeah, I think um, Hannes uh, van der Vreke also created like a Guzzle uh, collector to okay. see the outgoing requests. Yeah. Well, obviously now we have the uh, HTTP client in, in LRL, but, but before yeah. that. <clears throat> and it's actually pretty easy to just make, make a collector, but it's, I think maybe... Uh, a big step for some people to yeah to dive into that and, and see the configuration but mostly you, you can just copy the collector you you think it's it's, it's fitting, similar like to a few different uh, uh -huh. layouts like views and, and just data arrays and things like that just copy the the old one and make yeah. a new one and it, it should just work so okay I'm now trying to think if I can come up with a really good collector that I need so I can like live stream building it or something like that but um, I'm very excited about that idea about building your own. I mean, and again, when Jonathan first was talking about it, I was like, of course I could have done this this whole time. Why did I never think about creating my own collector? So I love that you have that kind of feature built in there for us to be able to do. Okay, so next question. Do you have a development roadmap, a plan of what's going forward with this that you'd like to share? Or is it relatively stable? And you, like you said, you, when LiveWire comes out, you do LiveWire. When you work <laughs> with October, you do October. That's uh, basically... Uh how I do it now because mm -hmm. um, there have been like two major releases since uh, the beginning of, of uh, like uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, it, it works and it, it, I'm happy with it. I yeah. don't hear a lot of complaints. Yeah, obviously yeah. there are also always uh, issues, but um, uh, it, it's working as expected. Uh, so I don't really see a reason to, to make any big upgrades. I don't want to make it harder for people to, to upgrade. I don't want to break yeah, any existing yeah. things uh, just just because I want to, to uh, do something, uh, refactor something. Yeah. Um, there are things that I, sh I think could be easier, like the collectors. It's easy to make a collector, but it's not as easy to add a collector. Okay. Uh, you can probably make just a configurable option and, and uh, make it easier for people to add, to to add those own. things. Yeah. That would be a step. And obviously there are a little bit of uh, third party dependencies that could be better, easier, because yeah. that's a bit of the downside of um, Deepak Bar is that it, it depends on a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. Like jQuery, jQuery is, is a dirty word uh, yeah. these days. <laughs> <laughs> and the font awesome uh, is, is heavy, but it's all scoped okay. uh, to its own, own classes uh, so it shouldn't interfere with with any of the existing uh, applications i almost never have any problems with with, with debug bar interfering with stuff i don't i don't want so in that mm. that's not really a problem but um i also looked at the telescope toolbar mm -hmm. and, which is more like the symphony toolbar and it's a lot cleaner uh, mm -hmm. front end wise mm -hmm. so that that is maybe something that could improve but on the other hand i don't really feel the need to yeah uh refactor all the javascript and all the css so probably not gonna happen. Trade -off. i'm mostly <laughs> focused on just keeping it upgraded for for new php versions for the laravel versions and yeah. if i see something useful mostly because i need something in my mm -hmm. own projects i just create a collector and uh, if it's stable enough then then put it on by default so okay very cool well, I mean, that, and that's that transitions to a nice next moment of like, because so you talked about what you're doing. If somebody were to come along and help, whether that's in terms of code or in terms of testing or in terms of financial support, I don't know if you have a Patreon or anything, what would it look like for somebody who appreciates what you're doing and wants to give back <laughs> to help you? Um, well, I'm always open for um, a good pull request. But um, as I said, I don't want to break things mm -hmm. or make, make it harder. So... I always have to to consider: Am I, yeah, am I going to to allow this? Because you you can show a lot, but 
you can also break things if you mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if you aren't careful. Uh, so I have to consider all the, the pull requests, and, and there are some pull requests like uh, change all the code formatting to PSR twelve or something mm -hmm. like that. And then okay, that's 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 nice. Yeah, but it would break all the pull requests that are currently open. So right. that that's a bit of a trade off always. Yeah. Um, so may, mostly, uh, if it's if it's a really useful feature, because like the, um, the HTTP client in Laravel, that's something I would accept as a as a pull request to add, a collector for that. Add, uh, added using the the, 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 the new events mm -hmm. um, or some other feature that that I haven't thought of uh, would also be welcomed. And I do accept pull requests for small bugs and and, and fixes, but I'm not always as quick to reply as, as I could be, because yeah, you know, I'm also you running a, job. a company and yeah. <laughs> uh, that I have a few other packages that also mm -hmm. have a lot of issues. Yeah, you know, people opening issues, not not mostly not big issues, because if there's a big issue then yeah, people will take me on. and yeah. then okay, this yeah, is yeah. a serious issue, then then I'll, I'll fix it. But uh, so possibly otherwise... one thing that people could do is go into some of those smaller issues and see if they can help out so that you don't have to be the one to help out. Yeah, possibly. Uh, or because some are just a little bit old and yeah. um, probably not relevant anymore. So yeah, uh, maybe they can yeah. evaluate it, realize it's not relevant anymore, and just say, "Hey Barry, you can close this one. It doesn't seem relevant or something." Yeah, because for the uh, the IDE help, but I, I do have someone who just stepped up and, and just took over all the the issues. So Great. that is really helpful. But yeah, you still have to find some middle ground. Because mm -hmm. I do have to trust him, you know, and uh, yeah, but it does. It is really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I I mentioned this on Twitter, but Therese Vince uh, from Laravel just started taking over the <coughs> issues on Valet, and just not having to manage the issues has given me so much more energy to work on the pull requests because now I'm not triaging communication all day long. I'm allowing him to do it, and he tags me when something matters, and I can just work on features and bugs. So I I'm here with you. I really love that kind of support. <laughs> Yeah, and I do have like a, a sponsor me button, All right. but it's not. To be honest, I don't want to to push people to uh, to sure. give money uh, if they if they need it uh, themselves. Because uh, I see it more as like more like um, what do you call it recognition of mm -hmm. your work. So mm -hmm. I also have one dollar uh, sponsors, and and that's that's nice just to show some appreciation and. Uh, but I don't do it for the money. I do it mostly for myself because I want to make the, the package yeah. as useful for me. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice that other people uh, uh, can use Get it. Get value from it. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, that's it for today. Is there anything that we didn't cover about this package or about anything else that you'd like to cover? Um, no, I think we, uh, we discussed most of it. Okay. If people want to follow you, uh, where do they follow you? Twitter or what's your best best spot? Uh, Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Twitter is. I don't post. I don't tweet that much, but uh, any updates will will be on. Will be there. Okay. So Sounds great. Me, uh, there. Yeah, and we'll link you in the show notes as well. So, well, Barry, thank you so much for this, and of course, the other packages that you make. We'll cover at least some of them in the future, probably. Um, but thank you for this wonderful package. I use it all the time. It saves my butt all the time. I'm very grateful to you, and thank you for spending some time today, just kind of introducing everyone to it. Yeah, thank you for inviting me and uh, having me on your podcast. Absolutely. Nice. Everybody else, we'll see you all next time. Bye.